Good morning and welcome to our service this morning on this All Saints Sunday. We welcome you who are here in the sanctuary as well as our online worshipers. Those who are worshiping online this morning are a very important part of our community and we invite you to share in our worship as well as in our offerings this morning by going to www.spelkfleetwood, that's S-P-E-L-C, fleetwood.com, to make a secure offering contribution. From the day we are born, we are given many blessings, which continue to multiply as our lives are surrounded by the gifts of the saints, the saints both past and present. We begin this morning with a Temple Talk message from two of our youth, Katie Cox and Kayla Holly. Good morning. The question we were asked to answer was, what does it mean to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul? As Christians, we are on a journey to live how God wants us to live. And if we lived how God wants us to live, then the journey would be over. Nobody's perfect, and it's okay to admit it because God loves us unconditionally. To love God with all your heart means to love everyone unconditionally. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Luke 12, 34. If your heart is with God, you will find the right treasures and live how God wants you to live. To love God with all your mind means to pray to help God to make, help make you stronger to help others. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. St. Francis, Francis of Assisi. Sharing the gospel and God's word without words means sharing it with our actions. Some actions that could share God's word are giving to the church, volunteering, treating everybody the same, and giving to good organizations. To love God with all your soul is all of these things in a combination. For example, and helping Meals on Wheels and not judging anyone for who they are. Giving your time, talents, and treasures to others. Thank you. Thank you. Other announcements this morning. Um, our special offering for the month of November is for Opportunity House. Opportunity House supplies, uh, uh, provides a homeless center, center early learning uh, program, and of course their op, op um, shop thrift store. Um, and of course, you're aware that we have one of their um, containers in our parking lot for contributions of shoes, clothing, um, CDs, books, um, anything as you clean out your closet that is in good condition that they can use and turn around and sell in their thrift store. During our um, coffee and conversation this morning, we welcome Burke's Connections which provides pre-trial services focusing on workforce development so that those who are involved in the justice system may find life-sustaining work. We are currently collecting items for college care packages to send to our college students, sort of to give them a little boost as they approach exam season as well as collecting items for the Christmas sharing program at the Lutheran home at Topton. Finally, again, a reminder, our community Thanksgiving service this year will be at St. Paul's United Church of Christ on Wednesday evening, November 22nd at 7 p.m. Let us rise for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. 
for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond all compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. 
and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from 1 John, the third chapter. See what the love of the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that we did not, it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do not know is this. When he who is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life. gospel is told according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus, talking about the coming of the kingdom, said, It is as if a man going on a journey summons his slaves and entrusts his property to them. To one he gives five talents, to another two talents, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he goes away. The slave who received the five talents goes out at once and trades with them and makes five more talents. In the same way, the slave who had received the two talents went out and made two more. But the one who had received the one talent went out and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with his slaves. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master! You handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the second, the one who had received the two talents, also came forward bringing two more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents, and see, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. And so I was afraid, and I hid your money in the ground. Here, you take what is yours. But the master said to him, You wicked and lazy slave, 
You knew, did you, that I was a harsh man and that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you have ought, ought to have invested my money with the bankers so that upon my return I would have received what was my own with interest. Take the talent away from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to those who have, even more will be given. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this man, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Whoops. Well, good morning. Good morning. No, right with up next to me. Can you tell me your name? What's your name? Zola. Zola? Zora. 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 Oh. Zora. Six. And you're six. Well, I'm Pastor Tom, and I'm gonna tell you how old I am. Just say over twenty one. Over twenty one. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is All Saints Day. Does anybody know why why we call it All Saints Day? You do? Why do you think we call it All Saints Day? Yeah. Yeah? Well, you're right. We do call it All Saints Day. What do you guys think? Do you know what a saint is? Um, uh, Yeah. Good. Kenzie, you know what a saint is? Have your parents ever called you saints? Probably not, huh? No, we were not going to go there. Well, a saint in the church can be everybody from somebody who's done something really great. Like one of the saints in the Lutheran church is Martin Luther, after who we're named Lutherans. Um, and I heard St. Francis mentioned earlier this morning. He's a saint. Um, but you know what? George is a saint. Did you know that? Nora's a saint. Zora's a saint. Kenzie's a saint. And Natalie. Natalie's a saint. Thank you for helping me with that. Saints are all of us. Sometimes we're not good saints, but sometimes we do some pretty saintly things, like doing kind things for one another and loving our neighbor. But one of the things that we do as saints that's most important is we help to multiply God's blessings. Do you know what a blessing is? It's just simply a favor. It's God showing favor to us. Can you think of any ways that God shows favor to us? Does he love? Go ahead, Kenzie. He gave us the earth so we can live on it. All right, that's a big one. And he gave us our bodies and minds and hearts and spirits. What are some other things? Nora, can you think of some things God has given? Nope, you're going to be noncommittal this morning, huh? George, what do you think? What has God given you that's special? Has he given you your parents? Yes. Nora says yes. He's given us our families, grandparents, friends. As Kenzie said, the earth. 
He's given us our ability to love and to care for other people. And so every time we do something kind for others, every time we do something kind for the earth or kind for our own bodies, we multiply God's blessing. And that's what makes us saints, all of us. So you're St. Nora and St. George, St. Natalie, St. Kenzie, St. Zora, St. Sally. You really are. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, remind us every day to do our best to live up to our saintly duties, that is, to love others, even as we love ourselves. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go back. Thank you. And thank you for coming up, Zora. So for the last couple of weeks, as part of our generosity campaign, we've been grappling with questions. Two weeks ago, it was, is financial success a sign of God's blessing? And we said, it can be. But financial success can also be a curse. And that God's blessings are shown in many other ways, even through failure. Last week, the question was, does God love those who love God? Sounds like a simple question. But as we talked about it and looked at the scripture lesson for the day, we realized that God doesn't just love those who love God. God loves everyone, regardless of whether they even pay attention to God. And that God calls us as his messengers to bring the knowledge of his love and the experience of his love into the hearts of those who may not know it. Today's question, or it's guess a true or false, Is it true, as Jesus says in the gospel this morning, that to those who have, more will be given? To those who have, more will be given. Think about that. Because the other side of that is that, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Now, I don't know about you, but on the surface, when I first say those words, it sounds harsh. It sounds like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It sounds contrary to everything that we've been saying about Jesus and about the power of his love in our lives that is supposed to share blessings with those who have nothing and not take them away. Well, let's explore that. First slide. So is the glass half full or is it half empty? How many say it's half full? How many say it's half empty? Yeah. Why? It's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of state of mind. The one slave who received the one talent, which, by the way, was an amazing amount of money in those days. It was 15 to 20 years salary or wages. A huge amount. This one slave, 
because he was afraid of his master, was inhibited from taking up the opportunity that talent offered him. And instead of investing it, he buried it in the ground. He was so scared. He was scared that he was going to lose and be punished by his master. He saw no opportunity. He saw no way of doing anything with it other than preventing it from getting lost. I think that's sometimes what leads to how we see the glass, whether it's half empty or half full. If I'm having a bad day, the glass is definitely half empty, if not empty. If I'm having a great day, it's half full, or maybe flowing over. Depends on our attitude as to how we see the circumstances of life and whether or not we see the possibilities that God is putting in front of us. If we're bound in fear, we can't see them, and we can't use them, or make good with them. Yet, slide two. We are all born and baptized as children of God. As we will do later today for Oliver, Oliver Schumann, we will recognize those blessings at the baptismal font. The water of baptism is like a shower of God's blessings that come to us from the very beginning. So that, in a sense, we walk wet through life, dripping wet with the favor of God on us, the favor of God for us. In the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, Jesus blesses the poor in spirit. He blesses the meek. He blesses those who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. The blessings are not held back until these kinds of people become rich in spirit or no longer hunger and thirst for righteousness. The blessings are theirs in their poverty in their weakness, for the meek, for the hungry, for the poor. God's blessings are ours always, and his favor never ceases. And so, in a sense, we live in a state of blessing. We live in a state of having the glass half full or full. Two of the slaves knew that. Yes, being slaves, they probably had some fear of their master, but not so much that it inhibited them from taking advantage of the blessing they had been given. One had received two talents, and the other five. They invested it. They made something out of what they were given responsibility for. And their blessings were multiplied. If Reformation, which we observed last week, is about knowing that we are justified by grace, that he is made worthy in God's eyes, not by anything we do, but purely by God's love, then All Saints Sunday is about how we embody those blessings for the world, how we embody that favor and that grace in the way we live. Jesus said, to those who have, more will be given. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. 
two slaves were able to see the blessing. One was not. Slide three. God gives us the tools to take the blessings that he gives us and to multiply. And he always gives us what we need in order to handle what he expects from us. For some of us, maybe in terms of generosity and stewardship, you have financial savvy. That's been your training, your experience. But for the rest of us, we have advisors. We have trusted friends. We have tools. To all of us, it's given the ability to pause, to plan and prioritize in our lives. That's how we multiply blessings, by taking stock of what we have, of how we have been blessed, and how we will use that, both for our own benefit and the benefit of the world. Being aware of God's gifts makes it easier for us to accept them. Being able to see a blessing and accept it and embody it is what gives us more. But when we are blind or fearful and we cannot see or accept the blessing, then we actually deprive ourselves of what has already been given. Today, we celebrate the fact that in our lives, throughout our lives, we have been surrounded by saints who have blessed us dearly. I still hear the words of my parents, words of wisdom that have guided me through life. I still remember that 10th grade algebra teacher who for this struggling algebra student made algebra fun. I remember Dr. Weichel at Gettysburg College, a music faculty member who was the first to articulate for me to hear what he saw in me as pastoral character and ability. Those blessings continue to multiply throughout life. But if I had never seen them as such, I would have deprived myself sorely. We are all given so much and so much more. God calls us and helps us to see the blessings so that we can accept them and live them for the world to also be blessed. Amen.
us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite all who are able to please kneel for the, the prayers. United with your saints across time and space, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and boldly discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. We marvel at the colorful and jubilant way the natural world cycles through fall towards winter. Help us to care for places ravaged, ravaged by natural disasters, especially in the wake of mass flooding in Acapulco, in England, Scotland, and Ireland. Quell raging fires and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good among us, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis, especially as we approach the winter months. May those who have more than enough give generously. Continue to expand our generosity beyond the walls of this building. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional unity among us, within our local community and among our churches. Welcome the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together and continue to raise up among us those who help us to focus on the things that really matter to you. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Are there other concerns or persons for whom we should pray? Hear our prayers for Donald Kirby and Larry Neff. We also pray for peace in Ukraine, for an end to conflict in the Middle East. And we pray for your care and compassion for the victims of the earthquake in Nepal. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all those who have died. Grace Marie Balthazer. Curtis Andrew Brooks. Nancy Olive Hensinger. Ruth Arlene Rhodes. Bobby Dale Miller. Samuel George Burrell. Barbara Jean Pinter. Ruth Doris Herring.
Robert Piles. Nancy Benikoff. Ruth Helen Hefner. Barry Lee Maidenford. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. stranger while traveling through this world below there is no sickness toil nor danger in that bright world to which I go I'm going there to meet my father. I'm going there no more to roam. I am going over Jordan. I am going. dark clouds will gather on me. I know my pathways rough and steep, but golden fields lie out before me. No more shall we. I'm going there to 
see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I am going over Jordan. I am going. soon be free from every trial this form will rest beneath the sod I'll drop the cross of self-denial and enter home with God. I'm going there to see my Savior who shed for me his precious blood. I am going over Jordan. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of the age, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Join our prayers of, with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, drink, and live. The congregation may be seated. I invite those who are communing online and those communing in the pews to commune at this time. And for our children, worshiping online this morning, may the Lord Jesus bless you with the lives of many saints who surround you with his greatest blessings. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of glory, Jesus Christ, the name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. There's a flower up here for each family who uh, has had a loved one remembered this morning. Um, you're welcome to take both the vase and the flower with you as a gift from our congregation. Thank you. Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.